Welcome to the TV broadcast of Accelerate Church. Pastor Jeremy File is teaching his series, Living Biblically. Did you know that doing what God's Word says can change your life? It can transform everything about the way you live. So let's join Pastor Jeremy right now for some instruction about just how to live biblically. For something to be biblical, it must be supported in the Bible. I know I, you would think everyone understands that. But if you do look around the landscape of Christianity in the United States of America, you'll see a whole lot of people with the placard Christian up in their life, but there's not much biblical about their lifestyle. Folks, that can't be us. We should be a walking, talking, breathing Bible epistle that people look at that points them to Christ. People should literally look at your life and say, Alex, Cassie, I just see the blessing of God on you. Here you are expecting a child here in just a few weeks. You already have a blessing from heaven. God has blessed you over and over again. I've watched it in your life. I'm, I'm, just, I'm speaking for real here. I've watched him. I knew, knew Alex when he was about this tall, about two or three years old, first time I met him. How old are you? 30. Whoop! See, that shows you how old I am. If you're 30... I'm 44, I'm 14 years older, so you were three years old when I first met you. Wow. And I look at what God's doing in his life. I was driving the other day with my children. I said, you see that door right there coming out of that school? They said, yeah. I said, that's where I used to pick up your Aunt Sydney every day. Aunt Sydney? I said, yeah. My daughter, that's my teacher, Miss Abram. I said, yes. Yes, I know that. But did you know I knew her before she was married? Before she had kids. Really? Yeah. It's strange to them, but I mean, I know it's just a few blinks of the eye, and they're going to be old and grown and married and all that, but praise God. Look what God's doing in your life. Amen. I see the blessing of God on you and Kagan, too. I can start naming all of you. But all you got to do is follow the Lord, and he's going to bless your life. Amen. Go to James chapter 1 and say, thank God for the word. Did you come hungry tonight? Yes. Well, you're in the right place at the right time. You know, if you get hungry for a chicken fried steak, there's several places you can go and get one. They're pretty good. You want some chicken wings? There's several places you can go. And I like hot chicken wings, hot chicken fried steak. Maybe I shouldn't talk about that if you hadn't eaten tonight. But I'm wanting this to be a sacrifice for you, see? I'm just kidding on that part. But, you know, there's certain places you go and you have an expectation to receive. You come here, you ought to expect to receive something hot right out of the oven. Amen. Well, I believe it. I'm a messenger dispatched from heaven. Bound by the Spirit of God to speak what he tells me, not what you want to hear. Glory to God. There's something you need to hear from the Spirit of God tonight. So you got to bind distractions. you got to turn off. Sometimes you got to turn off the device. Why? Because wouldn't you know it, someone will text you. You say, well, obviously you have a device on, someone can text you. I know, but sometimes my staff needs to tell me something because I forget stuff. Such as partnership coming up Saturday. Those of you that signed up need to be here. If you're not a partner, you want to be signed up. Be here. No, I won't cut the pancakes and feed them to you. But I made sure Yellow Rose Catering is going to be here, and you can get it yourself and eat it, and you'll be a happy person. And if you just need a refresher course, why are you even here? Come on to partnership. It'll become clear as a bell. James 1, verse 22. You've heard this before, hopefully, but you're going to hear it again tonight. Repetition is the key to championship. How many are champions in the spirit? How many are believing for victory after victory after victory? Come on, somebody. All right, well, then you need to hear this. He says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. See, you coming on Wednesday night could be one of the most dangerous things you do in your life. Why? Because you've positioned yourself to hear the word. But if you're stiff-necked and you don't do the word, you deceive yourself. That's what it says there. Isn't that something? Nothing's worse than being deceived. And especially being self-deceived. And all you have to do is hear the word and do nothing to be self-deceived. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word... And not a doer. So this is a specific individual he's talking about. The deceived individual is like this. He's like a man <clears throat> that looks at his natural face in a mirror. 
For he observes himself, he goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Who is it that does this? The person that hears the word and does nothing. He's the person that goes and looks in the mirror and says, oh, I'm good. Well, you know, when you get up in the morning and you look, and you done slobbered on your beard during the night, gentlemen, it's time to wash your face. You don't just walk away and say, it's good. Wash that puppy, man. That looks sick. (laughs) I don't use that word often, but you got slobber hanging there. It looks nasty. Do something about it. Now, you're not going to sit here stiff like this all night, are you? Did that gross you out? Maybe, maybe that's what it was. But you know, ladies, let's say you didn't have time to uh, rinse off your makeup and you wake up and you got black streaks here, red streak over here. It's time to wash up. You know what I'm talking about? You don't just say, oh, it's good. I'm gone. Let's go. What kind of person would do that? An idiot. (laughs) And yet Christians by the droves do that all the time. Now, we live in the end times, and this is real, okay? People are used to going places where they hear what they want to hear. And they claim that's where God sent me, where I get to hear what I want to hear. But you're supposed to be in an environment like this where you're going to hear something that kind of goes against the way you're living. Like there will be something in your life and all of a sudden it just grates on you. And you're like, oh, I didn't like that. And you know what most Christians, they're trained to even say this, that ain't Jesus. But if it's Bible, it is. Now, here's what James is saying. I love the first pastor. He just gives us a great illustration. He said, those that hear the word and they don't do it, it's like looking in the mirror. And notice, he doesn't say anything about making an adjustment. They immediately forget that the whole point of looking at the word is to conform your life to it. Instead of saying, well, that doesn't match my lifestyle. Let me look for a different verse. That's what people do. You give them 75 warnings against alcohol. Well, that don't fit me. I like alcohol, so I'm going to find one that supports it. You're an idiot because you're not making the adjustments. And that's actually way worse than having slobber on your beard all day. It literally is way worse because it opens the door to a demon. Slobber doesn't do that. Are you with me? Yet most of us would wipe that off first thing if we did that. Now, I really hadn't done that a long time, but next time I do, I've got plenty of children that'll let me know, Dad, you got something wrong there. Well, you don't want to look, you don't want to go away and immediately forget what kind of man you were. I like verse 25. Don't you love the Word of God? It says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. This is the simplicity of it. You get in the word and you continue in it. You never let the word offend you when it contradicts your lifestyle. Instead, you change your lifestyle and you continue in it. And you're not a forgetful here, but instead you're a doer of the work. Everybody say work. See, the word produces work in your life. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for LifeLinks. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. The sure, absolute, guaranteed way to be blessed is to keep looking in the Word of God. See, the Word is your mirror. And I can relate to this because the mirror reveals the adjustments you need to make daily. There's not a day that passes where you and I don't look in a mirror, a natural mirror. There's not a day that passes. But, you know, I I like to, if you come to prayer and you're here in the morning at 630, I'll be here. Of course, I was out of town Tuesday, and I hate missing, but... Anyway, I'll be back here. But when I walk and I get close to these right here, 
See, I can see in this glass my shoes, I can, but if I'm down there, I can see my face, but it's looking at a dark glass, not a lit glass. So what does that mean? I can see my face, but I can't always see any adjustments I need to make. All right? At my house, getting ready for prayer one morning, I was uh, getting ready, and I decided I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brush my hair and behind where I stand and look at the mirror, I have four lights that, you know, when it's dark and you flip those on, that's pretty bright. I mean, they're not the brightest lights I've ever seen, but when it's dark and you flip them on, it's like, wow. So to try to keep everyone asleep, the baby in especially, uh, even though the door's closed to the bathroom, I'll just keep my shower light on. The shower's back behind here. So if I look in my mirror, I can see my shower back here behind me. So if I flip those lights on, it's lit and just real dim, right? And so I was there trying to comb my hair, and I kind of got frustrated because all I could I couldn't see real well my face, and I couldn't see any details. So finally, I had to flip on the bright light. And as soon as I did that, this came up on the inside of me. This is what most Christians are missing. They're okay to look at a few scriptures here or there and say, "Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah," but they don't want to look at the good, bad, and ugly of what they need to adjust. Yeah. <laughs> now, this may shock you, but some people don't ever make adjustments and it shows up. Kind of like um, a referee I saw the other day at a basketball game. Oh, I got real quiet. I'm not talking about you. I just couldn't help but notice my girls were playing. And it was a Saturday morning. I think it was a Saturday morning. It, was an early, it seemed early in the morning to me still. And I'm there. And I look up, and I'm on the front row. I'm talking to a couple church members. I look, and the referee just happens to look at me, and I look, and his hair's like, I mean, just wow. He's kind of standing there just looking all. And I, after he runs off, I tell the members there next to me, I say, I think he just rolled out of bed and showed up. And they started laughing. They said, well, you said what everybody's thinking. Do you know that's not the only time in my life I've seen someone where I had that thought cross my mind? Why? I've been in church my whole life. Larry, you've ever seen that in church yourself? Don't point at anybody tonight. Not here. Okay, I like that. But I've seen it myself. It looks like somebody just rolled. You ever seen that somewhere you go and to do business and you're like, wow, they just rolled straight out of bed and came right here, didn't even adjust anything. You ever seen that? Come on, be real in here. Not everybody's always so pretty all the time. Some of us need more adjustments than others. Right. There are many Christians that I've realized this. They must not know that they have to adjust according to the word because they end up using the world as their mirror. Well, next to this one and that one, I'm looking pretty good. Yeah, but that's not your mirror. Well, my cousin who's never been saved, you know, he thinks I'm a holy roller. Yeah, but he's not your standard or mirror. She's not. So why would you say, well, this is what they, you know, they're pagans. I'm a Christian. It's all good. Quit using them as your mirror. That's like me looking, trying to comb my hair in that dark mirror. I had to turn the lights on. The Bible clearly says Christians should not fashion themselves after the world, but instead after the word. In fact, where it is is Romans 12 to Amplified Classic. Look, I just have the first part up here. It has a lot more because Amplified expands the verse. And I said, I'm just wanting this one point right here where it says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its customs. Wow. Summarize that in parentheses there to get the point across to you that this is telling us as Christians we shouldn't be fashioned after the world. Instead, we fashion our lives after the word. Pretty simple, isn't it? The message paraphrase says it like this in Romans 12 too. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Isn't that good? There's a lot of Christians doing just that. Can anyone look at your life and see a verifiable difference between you and Pagan Joe or Ann down the street? Now look what it says here in Romans 12 too. Instead, fix your attention on God. See, when you look at the Word, you're fixing your attention on God. 
And what happens? This word is alive, and it has the power to change you from the inside out. Somebody say glory. glory. How many of you have noticed the more word intake you have, the difference you look on the outside? Come on. Have you noticed that? Well, what is, where does it start? Fixing our attention on him. When we pay attention to the word, we're doing just that. And when we do that, something's happening. And you don't always see it on the outside first. God's got to do something on the inside first. God is, he's concerned about your inside. Right? I'm not talking about your organs and all that, though he is concerned about that. He fashioned all those and made those. He's concerned about your spirit. Because it's a strong spirit that will sustain you in adversity. And see, if you're going through a hard time and you don't pray in the Holy Ghost, you won't be sustained with God's strength. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, when you spend time studying His Word and saying, you know what, I'm going to do what this says. You spend time worshiping and praising. You make time for the things of God every day in your life. Strength rises on the inside of you. And you can make it through any storm. Now, the Bible tells us about itself something else that you need to know, and I've shared this many times, but look at Psalms 119, verse 130. Say, thank God for the Word. Thank God for the word. Psalms 119 and verse 130, New King James Version says, the entrance of your words, talking about God's words, gives light. So the more of God's Word that enters you, the more light enters you. Now, the more light that enters you, the more understanding shows up. Why? It says, it gives understanding to the simple. I came to tell you tonight, stop making this thing so convoluted, complicated. And let's keep it simple. Well, people want to make it like, it's this super dramatic, deep thing, and it's really, does the Word have entrance into you today? Have you spent any time in the Word today? Any of your free time? Well, you are right now. So everybody in there can say, yes. So what happens? Light comes to the inside of you because his word and the entrance of it gives light. So the more light you shine on any area, the more flaws are revealed. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. I'd rather judge myself now instead of facing the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, whose eyes burn like fire and getting judged then. There's no hiding anything then, right? So why hide anything now? So I, as I was meditating on this and thinking about coming to the light, these verses popped into my mind. I said, I'm going to preach John 3, 16. I don't remember the last time I brought that up, but I should bring it up more. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him, that means lives according to him. Doesn't just mean you say, oh, I believe in him because demons believe and tremble. Yeah. But whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God, verse 17, I think one of the problems maybe with America is people know John 3, 16, but don't know verse 17 through 20. That could be a problem. How many think that could be a problem? Yeah. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. See, his purpose is to save, but making one way of salvation automatically means when people choose other ways, they choose damnation. That's the, if you want to call it risk in saving us, that was the risk. But God wants all humans to be saved. But there's only one way to be saved, it's through his son Jesus. You got that right. Verse 18, now really pay attention here. He who believes in him is not condemned or damned. But he who does not believe, that means lives according to, is damned already, condemned already. See, condemnation is not a feeling. It's a passing of sentence. Don't ever define another day of your life condemnation as a feeling you have. I know that goes contrary to what you hear a lot, and you may even hear people in this pulpit say, but I'm just letting you know, if you study condemnation in the Bible, never once is it a feeling. It is a passing of sentence. 
It literally means, in the Greek, the gavel coming down. Boom. Yeah, so that means damnation. And that's what I'm saying. There's some things in our life, I'd like it to come to light now and correct it. Now, that means you have to stay humble. Because once you've lived for God a while, you start thinking, well, I got this down pat. Yeah, but see, if you don't keep your resistance up to the enemy, he's still going to come and roar. He's still going to come and try to send thoughts. And you never know what day he's going to send a thought and see if you got your shield of faith up to quench it. But see, if you're into quenching the Holy Spirit instead of the thoughts from the devil, you're on the wrong side. All right, that was another sermon for another day. But look at this. They're condemned already. They don't believe because he hasn't believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. Here's the sentence. Light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now, all you have to do is drive down a street anywhere in America and know that almost all bars and clubs open when? At night. He that drinks and gets drunk does it at night, the Bible says in another place. If you do evil, people tend to want to do evil when no one's looking. They don't like doing it in the light. You shine a light on it. People are like, oh, no, they don't, want to, they don't want to be seen doing anything wrong. You following this? Jesus is speaking here. He then says in verse 20, for everyone practicing evil. Now, I just want you to notate the, the verbiage here because it's not that you slipped up and made a mistake and sinned. you got to repent of that. That's what 1 John 1, 9 is written about to Christians if we confess our sins he's faithful and just a sinner that's a pagan can't confess all their sins they don't even know all of them that's why you just fall on your knees and say oh lord jesus save me i repent of my sins i turn from them and i will follow you then there's a lot that he has to teach you because you don't even recognize the filth that you've been swimming in and is your normal life as a sinner you know what i'm talking about but as a christian that you shouldn't relate to that now listen to this Everyone practicing evil hates the light. Practicing evil is different than a slip-up. When you practice, you just keep doing it again and again and again. The basketball team should say, yeah, yeah, we know all about that. You just keep doing it again and again. That's why I'm doing this free shot motion, right? Again and again and again and again. This is people described here by Jesus practicing evil. They stay out of the light. So this tells me they don't like living biblical. They don't like the Bible. Why? Because the entrance of the word gives light. And everyone practicing evil hates the light and doesn't come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. Now, you know I'm not a hardcore guy trying to make this hardcore rule, okay, about if the sanctuary is dark and this and that. People can do it whatever taste they want. But for me, I like to worship God with the lights on. Because it's in the clubs and everything else, they turn the lights down low because that's where sinful things are happening. And I can't help but think, literally, if people feel more comfortable in the dark coming in because they've been doing evil, evil deeds. And in the light, you're like, oh, I'm exposed out here. Everybody can see me. See, that's why some people come in here the first few times, they have a hard time praising. It's so bright. Like, they won't mind praising if no one can see in the dark. But see, I don't relate to that. we got to relate to people. We're people of light. We're children of the light, the Bible says. We should love the light. And I just want you to know this, that Jesus and the glory of God on him shines brighter than the noonday sun. Now, last time I tried it, I don't recommend it. I couldn't look at the sun noontime here in Texas or any, anywhere else I would be. Can you? Can't handle it. But that came out of his mouth. That glory came out of his mouth. He shines brighter. His glory shines brighter. And it's so bright there's no shadow. See, while I'm preaching and moving, I see shadows. We have brighter lights up here for television cameras and stuff like that. And so you can see there's nothing wrong with that. But they cast shadows because it's not the glory of God. It's just a light. There's something about the glory that illuminates and there's no shadow. Because there's no shadow in the Lord. Whew, he's light. God is light. Hmm. I like this. Everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. 
But he, verse 21, who does the truth. Oh, man. Well, John 17, 17, I showed you that the other day. Jesus said, your word, Father, is truth. So you could legit put in here, he who does the word comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So here's the point. If you can have scripture for the way you're living, you're living biblical, then you're walking in the light. And if you don't have Bible for it, then why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? You see, you and I, we've got to keep coming to the light. You've got to keep allowing the light to come into your heart. And I'm just going to tell you, the truth is, this is why so many people struggle in many areas of life. They don't give any real deep attention with the light shining bright on certain parts of their life. They don't even care. They don't be talking about my marriage. I mean, talking about my relationship with my mama. You talk about that family, and I can't, in the kingdom, Value family over obedience. Well, I'll tell you what, that, that's disrespectful. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm telling to you, this is straight from God. This is how God thinks. Obedience runs thicker than family. In the kingdom, it's that way. People on earth, they'll say, family's everything. No, it's, no, they're not. Not if they're pulling you away from God. Pulling you away from the light. It seems like, to me, People like the word until it makes a demand on them to change. Maybe it doesn't seem that way to you, but it seems that way to me. Being a Christian since I'm three years old, and of course there's been ups and downs in my walk where I've been hot or cold or et cetera. But I mean, I've been hot for God since 06 now, straight. And I've got to tell you this, I've seen a lot of people in my life and since 2006. And here's what I've noticed. A lot of people will come and say, man, I love your preaching until I preach on something they don't like. Like, everybody loves the word and the bless me stuff. They don't like the demands the word makes on you. And I refer to it a lot. Husbands love your wife. That's a demand on a husband that never ends. So just to be frank with you, that's not that fun. Now, when the feelings are there, it's a blast. But when you ain't feeling it, the demand's still there. Because the demands the word place on, places on your life never end. Write that down. The demands that the word places on your life never end. Wow, what a powerful, life-changing message when we turn from doing things our own way to doing them God's way. Well, there's more to this message, and if you'd like to hear it in its entirety, it is available on our website at AccelerateChurch.cc. Or we would love to have you with us in person at Accelerate Church in Amarillo at 4400 South Crockett Street. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. We would love to see you there. Or we'll see you next time here on the Accelerate Church television broadcast.